So in 1995, I was living and working in Hanoi, Vietnam as an architect. And one night, the tragedy of human trafficking was right before me. I witnessed a European man buying a Vietnamese girl for sex, and she was six years old. I tried to intervene, and I was unsuccessful in making a difference for that little girl. But that night, what happened truly moved me, grabbed me, and wouldn't let me go. I started to research human trafficking, and I found out that um, it's quite a big marketplace. And I also learned that I feel that this, um, this needed to be really affected by economic options for these artisans and for these people that fall into this um, problem. So I also learned that artisans are at risk of falling into human trafficking because their incomes are often below poverty levels. And as a designer and an entrepreneur, this is where I align with this, this issue. So I launched Lulan, a social venture, uh, to work with artisans using contemporary design uh, and to um, create stable jobs and to prevent human trafficking. But now we're setting our sights even further. And so the idea of Weave was born when Lulan had a textile competition online and designers from around the world wanted to collaborate with artisans. And uh, then also there were 1,600 designs that were crowdsourced in 16 days. So we knew that there was a desire to have this online community between designers, artisans, and buyers. And Weave is that online community where relationships and products emerge together through collaboration. Uh, also, um, we, we noticed that that's when a lot of designs actually really can be co-created. So we're, we're looking at the global diverse partnerships, uh, a, a part, a products, including textiles, uh, ceramics, and um, jewelry, and a lot more. So we are, there are three big <coughs> movements that we are leveraging. The maker movement is a movement that in 2015 is going to be $45 billion, and it's already been called the next, gener uh, next uh, industrial revolution. And you guys probably know a lot about it, especially at Singularity. Um, also about co-creation and transparent supply chain, it's going to be in 2014 a $200 billion market. So with these growing movements, and also with a large US and uh, global artisanal market already in place, this is a large opportunity. Weave is a technology and design company that is using co-creation and story to create a robust uh, revenue stream. And we make 40% of all sales, which is typical right now of e-commerce sites like Fab and others. So with relationships already on the ground, and with a uh, collaborative model that's already proven that we've done for a decade with Lulon, and with technology and with what it's happening and advancing, and how the maker movement is just going to be this incredible big market, um, the time for, Lul uh, for Weave is now. So we've got a strong team that has been past co-founders in technology, co-creation, and um, artisan product companies. We also have select advisors that have great expertise in logistics, data analytics, and, um, uh, and also co-creation and e-commerce. E Our early investors was, um, we've had many early investors, but Peter Thiel, uh, is one example, and also we have investors to date, uh, Alan Blue, from, who's the co-founder from LinkedIn. The competitive landscape um, is in established companies like Etsy, and also with new entrants like Fab, but none of them are doing co-creation with transparent supply chain. So Weave's advantage really is in its ecosystem that it's creating with, um, with its community, and it's, it's really unique product, um, unique project, sorry, unique partnerships that we're doing that we've done already with Lulon for 10 years. So, and also we have a patent pending for our uh, unique social um, storytelling. So in the next 18 to 24 months, we'll extend the team, build on the launch. We launched seven weeks ago. So we are live and you can go to the site and we're already selling products galore. Um, and also, um, we want to expand and really scale our artisan um, co-ops that we're working with around the world. 
So customers, when they're connected directly with designers and makers, actually have a, a more aligned way of, of choice, uh, choices with their products. And also, this is a way that we can actually have customers become repeat buyers and also evangelists. So when we, when we actually align our companies with our passion and our perseverance and how we do our businesses, and with these for-profit models, it really has a huge ability to have a huge impact. Thank you. I, I didn't do my homework on Weave before we, I came. So uh, can you explain to me how this works? I go to your website, and I want to co-create something. Uh, where does the technology end up with the creator at the other end? So currently what we're doing is we're creating this ecosystem, and we're only seven weeks in. So what we have to do first is create that system. So right now we've launched with um, where you can go on and you can see products. And it's crowd buying, uh, and so you need it by 20, and, and so that fits also aligns with the artisans and how they have to have a minimum orders. And when you do that, then the item goes into production. At that point, that is when the, uh, we've trained the artisans to tell their own stories. Uh, and not to tell their stories like people do, but to show by using the latest, greatest technology and a lot of videos and step-by-step -step of their process. And in doing so, then you get to see the making of your product as it's getting made. Um, and in doing so, what we're trying to do is have designers on there right now that we're working with. They're known designers as well as up-and-coming designers from places like RISD. So once we get that in place where we have this ecosystem, right, of designers and buyers and artisans, then we can start doing the matching where you as a buyer can say, I would like this product, I want that designer, and um, I would love to work with that artisan who has these, these expertise. Yes. What's, what's, you mentioned the crowdsourcing, you got 16,000 ideas. What's your, is that what you said, 16,000? 16, 16, uh, yeah, 1,600 16, in 16 okay, days, yeah. And what, what, is that using your own technology, or what sort of platform? We actually partnered with CrowdSpring to do that at that time. But when we saw the power of it, we were like, oh my gosh, this is, there's really something there. So, yes. Yes. Yeah, so I, I, in listening to your, tell your story, I'm not, Sure, I understand where the storytelling comes in. The story comes comes in when um, so we have a patent uh, on um, integrating the story in the buying experience. So you go online, you see a product that you like, you pre-order it, and you want to have twenty people order it so that it goes over the threshold. Right. The minute it goes over the threshold, you then get step by step video and photos of your product being made. That specific product directly to you. So that's the storytelling of the making of the product. Yeah. And how does that differ from a Shapeways or something like that? Because we're having the artisans tell their own story, so Weave doesn't tell the story. So that's the transparency of supply chain. So they're trained in telling their own stories. They own their own co-ops, and these are people who are really proud of the work that they're doing. So we're just you know, really empowering them to do that. Is a differentiator then that you're really targeting these artisans, whereas maybe something like a, a MakerBot or Shapeways uh -huh. might be just individuals can go up there and do what they want or whatever, whatever tools they find. You're trying to direct true artisans yes. to this. Yes, and designers, and designers to work with artisans, yeah. Um, hi, I'm, I'm curious, do you expect... Um, what, it, what is the uh, premise for the investors now? Is this a, a venture return? Is this partial impact and? Um, it's a for-profit social venture. So yeah, we've already raised $650,000 of our $1.5 to $2 million raise. Thank you very much. It was awesome.